So uh, yeah, I'm Chris Tibbetts. Um, I am an overeater, recovering overeater. Um, I am uh, three years in recovery now. Uh, I had a couple of wobbles over the last three years, but I can safely say I'm in recovery. Um, I'm 48, um, married to the beautiful Carmen. Luckily, with four wonderful dogs. I do have children, but we don't talk about them because they're all grown up. <laughs> so I was coming up to my 39th birthday and um, I, I'd been away to Dubai um, and there's an amazing photograph of me uh, on an Airbus A380 uh, with really poor fashion sense, I'm afraid. I had checks and stripes, not good, not good at all. But I literally look like a blimp. I'm huge. Sat at the bar and I, Never, I don't really take, didn't really take photographs of myself because, you know, when you're big, you hide it, and you're regular hiding it. Um, and I saw that and I thought, um, ooh, that's not good. And on that trip, I was with um, a good friend of mine and we shared a room because we could only get one room. And he said to me, I am never sharing a room with you again. I went, why is that? He went, the noise you made at night was horrific. I went, did I snore? He went, mate, it wasn't snoring. It was sounded like somebody waking the dead. It was like a <laughs> so it was like horrific. So he said, "Never share a room with you again." So I went, well, okay, that's not good. And then I noticed over time, you know, I'd hidden my weight quite well because I'm a big bloke, um, and I still play golf and I still moved around. But you know, I was noticing that I was feeling all unhealthy. I was having trouble breathing at night. So I went, well, okay, I'm coming up to forty. Let's go and get ourselves a bit of a health check. Um, so yeah, I went to go and see the doctor. It says, uh, jump on the scales. Uh, as I went to jump on the scales, uh, the bust. And bear in mind, the weight on those scales went up to 26 stone, and I broke them. Um, I'm pretty sure it's over 33 stone. So while I was at the hospital, they did blood test, did everything else, uh, and the doctor said, I'll come back in a week. So okay, I'll go back in a week. Uh, when I did, um, they had a big chair in the room, like Jeremy Carl used to have on the Jeremy Carl show. Um, and basically, he said, just sit down. Um, okay. And um, he said, uh, you've got high cholesterol, you've got high blood pressure, you've borderline diabetic, you've got probably case for sleep apnea, you probably don't breathe in the night you sleep. Um, he goes, if you don't make changes to your life, um, you're going to be dead by the time you're 50. I went, oh, okay, no, uh, you know, oh shit, that's really bad. You know, you only do, he says, um, what I need to do is just need to do some other tests. Uh, they're due back in, in a day or so. Can you come back? So I came back and he said, right. Um, and I knew the guy, the doctor really well from playing rugby. And he said, uh, Tibsy, you sit down. He says, you know, I said you wouldn't see 50. He says, you'd be going to be lucky to see 40th birthday. He says, uh, you need to make some changes now. And I went, oh, you know, as you do. Went back, um, got heartbroken. I, I was with my first wife at the time. Um, uh, she was like, well, told you you could be fat. Told you you're useless. Told you this, you know, you know but you know, you've done this to me. You're just big, fat and useless. So, well, thanks for the support, love. Yeah. Um, but, so I moved from that. I went, okay. And throughout my life, I'd always been quite good at losing weight. And I thought, oh, okay, I'll just go back to traditional. I'm, you know, I'll, my go-to diet, tuna fish and mash. Tuna fish and mash, potato and cornflakes, and that's all I'd eat. Um, so I sort of went, to, went to drop weight. Quite disciplined, so when I could be, I, I focused on it. Um, but I then realised as I was going along this, I lost weight gradually, got, lost weight. It's, it's coming off, but I wasn't changing my mindset. And, and I realised that actually my relationship with my wife at the time was really toxic and really unhealthy. And an opportunity came up to go and move to London to work. So I thought, right, I'll do this. And then basically while I was away, I realised I need to get out of this relationship. So um, when I'm in London, I just left my wife. Mm. Massive change, I had to basically declutter all my life. Because if I didn't, I knew I was going to die. Mm. Because I knew that that was going to put the pressure on me that was going to end up I was going to just disappear. For the next six years, um, I found Carmen, my new wife, love of my life, childhood sweetheart. You know, I left my wife and then we met up. Yeah. Um, and the rest was just a whirlwind. Um, and it was the first time in my life 
in a long time that I felt loved, appreciated, and I had somebody who was gonna support me. And that was interesting because I continued the weight loss journey. Um, I'd got a personal trainer, I was working out, um, and it was going really well. Um, and I got, you know, I lost, I probably went down about 17 stone. I did really well, it really fit, really fit. Um, but <clears throat> the problem was, I then got contented. And Carl moved to London to live with me, and with daughter Ebony, we had a great time. Um, and then the weight gradually started creeping back up again. Uh, and then we got married, so, oh, right, lose weight again. Um, lost weight, and then again, gradually weight started being put back on again. And that was a spiral of, of I put weight on. Um, and I, I had issues of, with being an overeater, which I didn't know at the time, but I did. And in any addiction, you create that challenge, you create that, that falsehood, you create lies, you create things. And I was always lying. You know, I used to lie. You used to denial. denial. My, what, you can't go, what are you eating today? Well, oh, I just had a sandwich. I didn't mention the three Starbucks, you know, full fat caramel macchiatos, the, the donuts at work, you know, um, oh, the Mars were on the way home and, and all of that. There was an interesting story. We were on holiday um, in Wiltshire and we were going to feed some ducks. And I said, oh, I'll go and get some um, bread from Morrison's. So I went and I'm sat there and as I walked in, there's these freshly baked cinnamon swirls in a pack of four. I'm thinking, can I get them and eat them before I get back to Carmen Ebony? Yeah, I'm sure if I could do that. So instead of just having one eating one and bringing some back, no. So as I'm walking back down to meet them, I'm there shoveling these current cinnamon swirls in my mouth. And as they come around the corner, they walk there and they catch me just the thing. I've got cream over my five. I'm like, Ooh. I was going, what are you doing? I went, I just, you know, um, just, just had one. I just had one, just one. It was a pack of four. I realised the impact it was having on my family and my friends. And if I look back across all of my journey, you know, I can see my own children, you know, that, that they've got weight issues from the fact of, you know, seeing what happened with their mum and my relationship and the food and the, being fed and, and finding comfort in food that it's natural that that happened with a family, you know, and, and, it, and it's hard when you think about the impact on your family um, and on your children. I, I say to people now when I'm, I'm working with them and coaching them, I say, you've got to think about the impact on the others around you because, you know, an overeating addiction is one of the worst you can have because drink, drugs and gambling, you can eliminate them really, you know, by environment, but you have to eat. And if your triggers are, you know, simple foods, you, you, the danger then is you flip to the other side of the overeating and actually you just don't eat and you get anorexia and you get other eating disorders. And quite often, you know, in that group, you'll have the same, you'll have overeaters with undereaters and it's the same problem and it pushes one, if you don't manage the balance correctly, you push one side over to the other. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think for me, the biggest insight I had in my battle and realizing I had a problem was I thought, I had everything good in life. I think it was 2017. Uh, I had a great job um, and really good money. I had a beautiful house, beautiful car, great family, lovely holidays. And on the outside, everyone think, oh, what perfect life he's got. Perfect life. But I was under immense stress at work and I wasn't managing my eating and I was putting weight back on. And I had got to a situation where I went um, uh, to Shrewsbury, done a why for the day to go and work went to Starbucks and basically I sat down and for four hours, I can't tell you what happened. Blacked out, I can't, those four hours are lost to me. I don't know what happened, but I then realized I had a big problem. I uh, had a challenge, then uh, got some help from work and said, well, I'm, I'm gonna break down. And, and I knew it was related to food. And then in, I won an award at work, um, which got me, um, went to an awards in Manchester, photographs with the reward, saw the photograph and I went, oh my God, that guy's back. The guy who was 33 stone. In 2017, I was probably around, I'd creep back up to about 27 stone. When I see those photos, I'm just going, and I realized, but I look, but when I looked at the guy there, I saw that person, who, that person I thought I'd lost was there and I realized at that point I had an issue. So <clears throat> unbeknownst to my wife, um, I spoke with a good friend, Ruth, and she said, have you considered overeaters on this? You know, because it seems you have obviously got an issue. Reached out to them, and for six months, um, I joined a program, 
Carmen didn't know about it, nobody knew about it apart from Ruth. Um, I found myself a new personal trainer um, and then I started working with a mentor and coach called Paul Moore to work on my mindset because I realised that I can't diet my way out of this. I had to go through the whole 12 steps exactly like you do with alcoholics and gamblers and everything else. I then had to acknowledge my mistakes and I had to go and apologise to people. You know, because I did and I said to sat down with Carmen, I said I'm really sorry for all the pain I've caused you. I'm sorry for my lying, I'm sorry for everything I've done because you know, it, it wasn't me, you know, it, it's not the person who I am. It was my addiction that caused it. Um, and then obviously I worked with, with a trainer as well, a uh, personal trainer, Luke, um, and he, we worked on nutrition and rather than just going, right, here's your guy's diet, we actually looked at the whole, what, what do you eat, how do you eat, and then with the work I did where we eat as anonymous on my trigger foods, I could then eliminate the things that weren't going to serve me. During lockdown, um, I carried on training, so I basically went to train twice a day. So I bought a ski erg, which I love. Um, that was my saviour. So Carmen says, I said, I need something. I didn't want to, I hate what bikes. Um, didn't have space for a rower. So I've got a ski erg, which is fitted brilliant in the garage. So it's upright instead of taking the space out. Uh, I had my kettlebells um, and basically I just worked out. So I did hit classes and then I had carried on the online PTs with Jack. And then walking, bless them, the dogs never walk so much. You're like, right, like one walk a day. Yep, that's going to be five hours. See ya. <laughs> um, so yeah, the dogs loved it. Uh, so basically, um, I track food. So I'm very disciplined. I, I, I switched last year from my fitness pal to a different app. And up to that point, I tracked 875 days without break on, no, on my fitness pal. And now I'm on the new app, um, which. And so I've never missed a day. So I think now, obviously one of the biggest impacts I have now is that in terms of my mindset, I journal. So I'm always questioning myself. More, you know, in the morning and evening, I'll ask myself a set of series, series of questions uh, and I schedule as well. So I try not to have um, that boredom period in there. And obviously having four dogs, you know, you don't get bored because they're all occupying you. Um, but I keep myself busy because I don't want to have that situation where I'm sat there mindlessly watching the television and then go, oh, there's stuff in the cupboard, or oh, I'm going to eat this, or I'm going to eat that. Um, and I know it drives Carmen crazy, but I'm always planning my meals. And she'll go, I can't think about tomorrow night. So I'm going, oh, I'm on past tomorrow. I'm on Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. Um, because that's putting my routine, it's allowing me to, because if I don't plan, I'll then reach whatever's in the cupboard or reach whatever is it. And I like to be disciplined now. And I think that's creating that discipline because Motivation is great, but when motivation fails, all you've got left is discipline. And it is a constant battle, because that's, you know, until people have been there, they don't really understand, and it's like, oh, you can have an off day. You can have, yeah, but the trouble is, one day becomes two days, becomes three days, and before you know it, you know, you, you're, you're back in that place. And, and in the scale I'm in, you know, um, the old me could easily smash 10,000 calories in a day rather than thinking about it. But that's why, my new life is focused on helping other people because if I've been there, I know the demons, I know the triggers, and I know what it's like. You know, and I, I see lots of people in the industry going, "Oh, well, I'll help you weight loss. I'll do this." But you know, you've got if you're a big 25, 30 stone bloke, and you've got some six-packed 24-year-old personal trainer, going, come on, jump around. The room, they're going to go, "Mate, you never even, you don't even know my struggles." Whereas I've walked that path. I've I've been there. You know, I know exactly how they're thinking. I left my corporate job in September. Um, I thought about going back into the consulting world. You know, it's nice lucrative money, but um, I was doing a presentation for Alex's group um, about my journey. And then all of a sudden, a light bulb came on and went, actually, I've done something pretty phenomenal. And there are thousands and thousands of people out there who need the help. You know, there are dads out there who can't play football with their kids, who can't go to on holiday, who can't go on theme park rides. I went to Legoland with my kids and couldn't go on the ride because I was too fat. You know, there's lots of people who are avoiding that. So, you know, from that session with Alex, I've now realised there's a purpose and I have a purpose. I want to go out there. There are thousands of men and women, but predominantly men who need to get their lives back. And my aim is to give, you know, give me a year and I'll save your life. When we went to Florida for the first time, there's a Harry Potter ride, and uh, I think mean, you dangle in the air, and you're on broomsticks following, broomsticks following Harry and Hermione. And 
they basically, bear in mind this is America, right? And they couldn't get the thing over the top of my shoulders because I was too big. So I had to then skip the ride and go back. We went two years later with our nephews and uh, got on the ride. And I said to Carl, I said, first thing I'm doing, don't care whatever ride, I'm going straight to there and I'm going on it. So I was straight there and I got on it and it was great. And that was it. You know, and that was a great achievement for me. It's just, you know, I was completely different first. But again, that departure from where I used to be to where I got to. As I say, there are thousands of people out there who need, who need that, who are slowly killing themselves. And, and it's not fair on their kids, it's not fair on, on, on their wives. You know? and, and, there is, and it can be done. This, this culture we've created in, at the moment of easiness. You know, everyone wants a quick fix. You know, the, you know, the fact that you, know, you can lose weight for a year and you get a gastric band, great. But actually that's not helping, that's not addressing the issue. You know, the biggest battle in losing weight is from there up. You know, it's not about doing the exercise, it's not about putting them out, it's about dealing with that. If you deal with that, then actually that's going to be the battle and your battle's, you know, 90% there. Because anyone can lose weight. It's a very simple thing of less calorie, you know, move more, eat less. It's the simple, most simplest formula in the world. But people make it a struggle. There's two short, to, well, me, short to medium term goals. And then there's the rest of my life goal. So. The first short-term goal is I want to do a photo shoot in April. Shredded, right? Okay. Uh, that will then help with the weight loss to then towards my second goal, which is um, part of my original weight loss journey. I did a triathlon because the first year we were here, I saw them in Ch uh, Nantwich in Cheshire do the Cheshire triathlon. I went, yeah, I'll never be able to do that. The following year, I did it even though nobody thought I could do it. Even my wife didn't think I'd make it the way around. She was dead proud of me, bless her. And next, uh, sorry, in 2022, I'm going to do the Lake District Half Ironman triathlon. So that's my objective. Okay. Once I've completed that, I will then be 50. And it's all about maintenance. And it's all about having that balance um, and having that, you know, because I'm quite comfortable. Because I'll have adapted, I'll be living the life I want to live then. But it's never going back. This is the thing, this is the journey I've made, I'm not going back now.